Hi, my name is Jen Campbell and I'm your host for Parent Support. This is going to be a monthly show where we are going to be talking about all those issues that parents are having. Um, we'll have guests who are parents with kids of various ages, youth and young adult, um, and other experts on mental health and topics like that. Um, this month we are going to be talking about Lent and for our guest we have Bob Dunning who is the host of the Bishop's Hour in the Diocese of Sacramento on Relevant Radio. He is a husband and father of six, and that's the main reason we asked him here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Bob. Good to be here. Good to be here. It's, I, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very interesting being a parent. There's, they, they aren't born with a manual. Why? You know, I, I don't know why. They should, they should have a manual for, for parenting. Uh, I mean, they, I, I remember when my wife was pregnant with her first, and and there was this book, and it took you through every day of pregnancy, and and the, the baby is this size, and then it's this size, and now his heart's beating, and now yeah. you know, and then it's born, and it's it's so you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, they have those apps where it tells you like what size fruit it is. Uh, yeah, exactly. the baby is, and yeah. and all. Yeah, and then He's now an avocado. And yeah. they don't they don't have that once they're born. Not once they're born, you're on your own. <laughs> that that is the struggle, and I imagine that it gets even more challenging and more exciting as they get older getting into those teenage years and young adult years and well it, it does uh, you know two years ago we had four four teenagers at home uh, all year apart and uh, um, now two of two of them have, are away at college and uh, we still have two teenagers at home uh, but uh, teenage years are, are, are different uh, than when they're when they're babies when they're all so cute when they're little and they say their first word and they take their first step and and just, you know, the first thing they're interested in or the first talent maybe that they showed, uh, you know, those things are, are all exciting, uh, the first day of school. But the teenage years are really different. They're really challenging, uh, especially from a, a faith perspective. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you go to mass and uh, in the early years you're sitting in the quote unquote cry room. <laughs> It's like anything goes in there. People are people are eating. Uh, the kids are eating. You know their their little Cheez-Its or their Cheerios, their Cheerios or wh whatever. You know, and 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 it's noisy and and all that. And then and then you 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 graduate to the back row. You know, and kind of you know yeah. You know, and you and you 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 literally see your three-year-old looking over and going through the purse of the woman sitting ahead of you. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to be paying attention to mass, but they're only three. They're only three and we've, you know, pews are not designed with booster seats. So no, they aren't. Often you know, that's, that's, can't see. You know, it's, it's interesting because I've heard a lot of people say, you should sit your kids in the front row, yeah. in the very front row. I can't sit in the front row. I, I just, I, I can't do it. I, I, I need to be, looking out for some reason, but I'm not sure it's good for them either, you know, it's... it's yeah, I think it depends on the child. Everybody in, in I mean, you, you sort of, you want to have your kids where you can try to, uh, con not control, but, you know, have them pay attention, but they're little, yeah. you know, they're, you're, they're, they're, they have limited attention span. Right. And you, you don't want everybody in the church to be watching. Oh, look at that dad. He's being a little harsh or he's, you know, or right. look at that kid. The kid's acting up or, you know, and, and the, fortunately we never had, uh, you know, sort of the meltdown in church or, mm -hmm. or, and they, the thing that we always found was so helpful, uh, whether it was during Lent or, or not, was once they got old enough to understand a little bit about the readings, would be the say Saturday uh, at dinner time or after dinner, um, not some formal sit down, crack the book open, but but we're going to go to mass tomorrow morning, and Father So and So is going to be saying mass, and uh, that was his name. Uh, yeah, and, I uh, figured. Uh, um, and they're gonna, we're going to have these readings, and and we would do the readings, and those that were old enough could maybe participate and actually do do the reading uh, as you know you're getting older but and then discuss it just in a in a uh, just in a family comfortable way uh, discuss the readings and what that did number one was it allowed uh, Shelley and I to 
express our opinions about what's, what's this about and what do I take from this because every, everybody has a, a different take. But then when you're at mass the next day and it gets time for the readings, all of a sudden they are, their ears perk up and their eyes get bright and they go, wow, that's what we talked about. This is the prodigal son story. Right. And, and, and they really pay attention. And then, you know, you're after mass, you're going over to the hall for a donut or maybe you're going out to breakfast or, or just driving home and, or, or walking home. And you can talk about it a little bit and suddenly everybody got a little different take than they heard the prodigal son Saturday evening at home. Yeah. But it really, it was, it was just amazing how quickly that turned them on, if you will. To, to pay attention during Mass. Well, and also I'm sure that it helped to be able to listen because like we're meant to listen and hear the the readings at Mass. We're not meant to be reading them at Mass. And so, because God is gonna put the word into your ear that you're meant to hear, yes. right? And so, if they've already pre-read them, they're, it's not like a, it's not a cold read for, the, no, for hearing not. the things, for hearing the stories or hearing the, the the epistles, the gospel reading. So something is going to stand out to them differently and is going to hit them stronger. Yeah. Um, prepping for Mass is what we're all called to do. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, not, you know, not everyone does it. It's, it's interesting because in, in Lent, and I remember this so vividly from when the kids were little, they were probably five, four, three, and two. And three girls were the older and, and, and a little boy. and. Maeve, Molly, I see if I remember their names, Maeve, Molly, Emmy, and Mick. And it was Good Friday, but I had a job reason I had to be up in the Reading area on Good Friday. And uh, I, I had the four of them with me, and I called the parish in Maxwell, the okay. historic parish, I think it's Sacred Heart in Maxwell north of Williams, about a, about 60 miles from Sacramento. Uh, we're, our home is in Davis, so about the same distance, just up I-5. I called up and they said, oh, yo, we're, we're gonna be open between noon and three, and, and uh, et cetera. It's a very, very small town, a very small parish, one of our historic parishes, and, and we pulled in about two o'clock, and there was not a car. <laughs> oh no. And I said, well, it's a small town. I mean, it's a really small town. Everybody walked. Yeah. yeah it, that can make sense. The, and, and, but I thought we missed it. So we go, we go up, but I see the door is slightly, slightly ajar. Mm -hmm. Like somebody just forgot to close it. And we pull it open and peek in, there's nobody in there. We had missed it. And we walk in and a woman comes out from behind somewhere and she says she was cleaning up. And she said, oh, we had to move it up for some reason, and everybody, it's, it's over now. But you're welcome to stay and look around. Just close the door when you leave. When you leave. Don't forget your hat, you know? <laughs> and, and so we had the stations of the cross. It was Good Friday. 14 stations. And people would, might say that don't know, and I didn't know, that's a little too harsh for a little kid, uh, some of the 14 stations. Um, this is going to be real difficult. But rather than sit in the pews, because there was nobody there, we were literally able to, walk to go to the one and the two and the three. And, and they're just, I mean, you see their little eyes looking up and just how fascinated yeah. they were and how interested and the questions they ask. Why, why did Jesus fall? Why is Jesus carrying that? Who is that? Who's, who are these women? Who are this? What, all the way through it, there was no, there was no trauma. It wasn't too difficult. It was, God has his way. Right. And that lesson to, to me, where maybe I would have thought, oh, I, don't, I don't know about taking them around to, at this age to the Stations of the Cross, was, was really vivid mm -hmm. in terms of, of your children are never too young about to learn about our faith. They just are never too young. Never. Obviously, every, list, every lesson is going to be different and age appropriate and et cetera. I mean, we, you're not doing mother-daughter with your kids when they're four or father-son with your kids when they're two. But, you, but 
it's, it's amazing how God has his way. And, and he, didn't, uh, he did not give us those words and, and the prayers. And I mean, the Our Father, that's the prayer Jesus gave us, right. you know, and, and it makes sense to kids in a, in a different way than it makes sense to adults. But it's, it's like it's all there, it's the perfect prayer. Right, and it makes sense to us in different times of our lives in different ways. Yeah. The same with the stations. I think, you know, you, the, the thing that I took away from you talking about the stations there was, was not that it was too hard for the kids or it could have been too hard for the kids or even that you walked, which, I mean, that's so age appropriate for yeah. pretty much any of us, honestly. Like, we're, it's better. Like, people pay much more attention. Better. People yeah. pay much more attention to the stations, I feel, if they can walk, the, right. if there's some kind of kinetic learning done with that too. But the kids were, because there was just the four of you, or five of you, uh, I forgot to count you in that group, uh, you were able to, to, to let, ask, let them ask questions. Yeah. And I think that's something for any age, um, I know that we often expect kids, like in a certain setting, they have to be quiet. Right. But I think kids have questions when they have a question. So like, if they're not like being loud about it, if they're just whispering the question to you, like, yeah. I don't care how old they are, <laughs> let yeah. them ask it. Let Even if it's during it. mass, like, what was that word? Or what did that mean? Um, you know, I've, I've sat with my friend's kids at masses and when her son was like four, he would just talk the whole time and yeah. she would get upset. And so we would sit like three people away from her sometimes and I would just let him ask me questions. Yeah. And during mass, and it, was, it wasn't disruptive, it was often like, he, you know, he'd learn something new. My personal favorite was when he recognized, finally recognized at like four, maybe five, that, um, that Jesus was dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he didn't realize that he was the person on the cross and he like put it all together that during that reading, yeah. he heard the reading and put it all together. And I was like, yeah, but he's, he's with us. And like, he got to get that answer because he was asked the, he asked the question, like he wasn't afraid to ask. And so that I think is so important. Like no matter um, what it is with kids, like let them ask the question. Yeah, I mean, mass is, is it can be a lot of things to, to, to a kid but it's, it's way more than you just want your kids to behave during mass. Right. Um, I, otherwise, I mean, why are, you, why are you bringing them to, I mean, we, we would never even think of leaving them home from mass. I mean, right. this, is, this is what we do. Um, and, but you know, the, people talk about the formative years and how, how important those first few years are. Um, and, and if, oh, mom and dad are going to mass and, and you might misbehave or you might disrupt or you might just, it's not even misbehaving, uh, it's talking, right. you know, and be, it being loud or inappropriate or and there's, there's no way for a kid to be inappropriate. Right. They're, that they're being appropriate to their age. It might disrupt a little bit, but, and, and, and you, you do want to control those things. You don't right. want to disturb people around you. And I mean, that's why they have the cry room. But, right. but you, you can get a, you know, you, sometimes you can be in a cry room and it's kind of an anything goes mm -hmm. daycare kind of thing. And, and I, we don't really want that no. either. You know, we want them to be able to, as much as their attention span can handle. Actively participate. Actively participate. And it's different. It's different at, at, at every age. Right. And some of the, uh, I, I remember one of my daughters just, she really liked to sing and she just like the choir, man. When the choir got going, that was, and, that and was we're nice. singing, you know, whatever we're singing, uh, she just, she just loved it. Yeah, and I think helping them find their, whatever it is that they're attracted to at Mass is their way to serve the community. I think is so, like help them to like, to be into that position. So if they want to be a lector, if they want to be a, if they want to be in the choir, like help them. Well, I'm, I'm one of those that you, know, you can tell the, the ushers are one down with somebody with a basket, you know, and I'm like, I'm not here, I'm not here. <laughs> Let me sit in the middle, you know. Yeah, I don't want to get up in front of all these people. I'm, I'm shy, you know, and, and one of my daughters, so man, when she's eight years old and she can't, she's hoping somebody's like, would you help us? Would you help <laughs> us to, with the collection? Man, she's ready to go. You know. No, I think that's important. So, you know, you talked about doing Stations of the Cross during Lent. Um, are there any other like family traditions that you guys always make sure to do during Lent? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, St. Patrick's Day always falls during Lent. True story. It's on a Friday this year too. <laughs> on a Friday, no less. Uh, I don't. I don't know that uh, they've come up with. Uh, uh, you know, the was it Beyond Meat? Uh, they've come up with Beyond Corned Beef yet? <laughs> 
Can't imagine they have. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as Irish Catholics, of course, that's a, that's, that's a big day. But that's, it just happens to fall during Lent. I think it, it proves that God has a sense of humor. <laughs> Maybe, you know? yeah. But, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the biggest part of Lent, I guess, even though it, it is the 40 days, I remember when I was a kid, it was all, all about what are you going to give up? And I, you know, li grew up in a small town and we didn't have a Catholic school and went to the public schools. And, and my dad said, uh, you know, the other kids are going to watch you. They're going to they're look at you. They're going to see, they're, they're, are you following the rules? Because this was back in the days, even not during Lent, when we didn't have meat on Fridays. Yeah. And so there, was, there would always be the, in the school cafeteria, kind of the, the Catholic fish stick line. And, and, <laughs> but there weren't very many of us. You know, there was Betty O'Brien and Peter Schultz and me, and that was about it. <laughs> and, and my dad was right. The other kids would watch you on Friday, to, especially at the football game on Friday night, to see if you were going to eat a hot dog or yeah. you weren't going to eat a hot dog. And the same thing during Lent. They were, it was never hostile or um, um, teasing, maybe, maybe gentle teasing, um, like, what'd you give up for Lent, Bobby? What'd you give up for Lent? You know, and then they would watch and see if you were going to sneak that Hershey bar or whatever it was you had given up for Lent. Now, of course, we're... We've, we've shifted to, to much more to charitable acts and, yeah. and almsgiving and, and et cetera, you know, um, do, do, doing positive stuff. It's still great to, to we still have the, the fasting and the abstinence. And, um, but, you know, it's like you gotta be, you got to be a little careful on, on Lent. You know, the Friday night fish, fish feeds can get a little bit out of control uh, when you're thinking, this is, I'm, I'm actually giving something up here, yeah. you know, Kill me with lobster and yeah, <laughs> and you need crab, you, know, you and do and have to you know take it. And and, and that's where we get into the, the fasting part being so important, mm -hmm. you know that, and and I think it's it it's it's good for kids to understand. And I know the you know the, they have age appropriate the same thing in terms of fasting and abstinence and things like that, um, but uh, it's good for them to understand why you're doing that and what's right. that about, but. When, when you really get to the end of Lent, when you get to Holy Week, that's really the participation on Palm Sunday mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the readings the, the, is profound. Yeah. It's really profound. And um, those are, you know, and if, if, if you can make it, um, Holy Saturday, when, when all year. these people are coming in, I know it can, it, if the kids are, young it's it's a very long and and right. and a little bit late mass but um it's it's one of the few masses i've cried at even though nobody in my family was coming into the church at the time but it's beautiful to see it's it so beautiful to see but to to participate in i mean there's so much going on in holy week in terms of of you know the last supper in terms of uh, Good Friday, of course, and, and, and Holy Saturday, and then Easter Sunday, which is just, you know, it's, it's a mir <laughs> the miracle, you right. know. And, and when, I, I think the most important thing as a parent to impart to your kids about your faith is that they believe that you believe it. Oh, okay. That you're not just kind of, oh, well, Going through the motions. Yeah, we're going through the motions here, and I'm going to stay home and watch the 49er game. But you guys go off to Mass, and you ride your bicycles, you know, because until you're such and such an age, you, you're going to do this. Right. And, and if they don't think you believe it, they're not going to believe it. You could have a, a rebellious kid, and they're still watching you um, to see how you act. They're still role modeling you. Right. And you're, I mean, I, I've said many times that we're, we're, we're role models all the time, not just to our kids, right. but to everybody. And you're, I mean, if, if you're, you walk into 7-Eleven and, and your kids are with you and everybody sees how you treat your kids. You walk into a 7-Eleven with a newborn baby and if you act like this is the greatest thing that ever happened to you, or, and you get a whole bunch of teenagers over at the Slurpee machine, and they're looking at you. Right. You know, and, 
And they're going to all face that, sometimes maybe even a, quote, crisis pregnancy in their life, and go, that, that, that family with that baby, man, that, that's pretty special. Or, oh, man, that kid was crying, and the parents were stressed, and you're always, you're always a role model. That's so true. And when you're thinking about, like, you talked about the importance of, like, Palm Sunday and the Holy Week as we end, you know, as Lent comes to an end and the Triduum begins, um, the, the participation, and sometimes those Masses, you know, they can be a little long. Um, ho- you know, the <laughs> Holy Thursday Mass is late, so is yep. Easter Vigil. They can be later Masses. But what an opportunity with your teenagers, especially, yeah. to be able to come and see people entering the church. Like, when... You know, even Ash, Ash Wednesday. Even Ash Wednesday, I mean, where you get so many people. You, uh, I, I, don't, I, I have trouble believing these figures, but I hear it every now and then. Somebody said it the other day, uh, that Ash Wednesday is more attended than Easter Sunday. I don't think that's true. But Ash Wednesday is, it's huge. It's not it's a holy huge. day of obligation. It's I always huge. like to say it's a holy day of opportunity. But it's not a holy day of obligation. It's not a Sunday. It's, it's Ash Wednesday, but it's, churches are packed. Churches are packed, and they have multiple masses and more opportunities or prayer services for people to attend. But it, I mean. I, I mean, my, one, of my, one of my daughters, uh, goes to Sacramento City College, but she, there, there's a satellite campus on the UC Davis campus, and, oh. that, and that's where she goes to. And she's gotten very involved with Newman, and, and she also has a part-time job at Safeway. And, you know, they get their schedule, and, and you can request days. Yeah. She request, requested off Ash Wednesday. Be, which made me cry. So I guess maybe we've been doing something right, <laughs> you know. Maybe. She requested Ash Wednesday off because Newman was having a special Ash Wednesday service on on campus. campus yeah. yeah, like they do at Sac State, like they do up at Chico, right. um, and she wanted to be a part of it, you know. That's awesome. And yeah, and it just uh, it, it really it really touched my heart that that was so important to her. And I think that's that's telling what you have done as a parent with prepping them for Lent, like helping them understand what Ash Wednesday is, why it is so important, why Lent is so important. Yeah, um, and, and even the, the fact that the ashes are coming from last year's right. palm fronts from Palm mm-hmm. Sunday, it's such a it's such a, a, a connection, I guess, if you will. It's like it's like the chrism mass, right. um, where the oils. The Chrism Mass here is usually uh, prior to Holy Week. Many places it's during Holy Week, right. but here it's prior because the diocese is so big, it's hard for people to get here and then get back for all the Holy Week activities. Yeah. But to think of the, the oils are, are blessed and, by the bishop, and then they're individually distributed to each pastor to take back to the hundred and some parishes we have, some of them 300 miles from the cathedral, um, it's so unifying. Right. You know, and it's all, I, I think it's all grown in my own home, Yolo County now. <laughs> so, oh, that I don't know, um, but yeah. I, yeah. And, and to explain that to the, to, to the kids, and if, if you've ever been to a Chrism Mass, um, do it, um, and to see Virtually every priest in this diocese, mm-hmm. all together in one spot, is pretty impressive at, at the, yeah. to, to what they, these people have given up in their lives and what they're doing with their lives. Uh, pretty darn impressive. And that's, that's a special part of Lent that maybe a lot of people don't really even know about the Chrism Mass. Right. And I think, you know, maybe they've heard about it when they're going through confirmation. We'll talk about it. It's definitely the chrism mass is definitely one of the lessons because we have to explain what chrism oil is um, for confirmation. And so I think maybe that's when they would hear about it. But it's one of those things that maybe is just like, I heard that word. I don't know what it is. right. Right. And so how do we help our kids to know what it is by, well, taking the time to go to the chrism mass? Um, and experience it. It's always at the cathedral, and it is the Thursday before, the week before Holy Week. Um, Usually about six o'clock, something like that. Usually about six o'clock. Yeah, one thing that works is a dollar to the first kid that can spell triduum. Five dollars if you can spell triduum and chrism. 
correctly. Yeah, triduum is a hard one. It's a tough one. It's got double vowels. The double, the double U in there, I mean, what's... Uh, Not a W, but two U's. Yeah, what, what other words? What, we got vacuum, yeah. that's two U's, and that's about it. I, I, I'm really bad at spelling, <laughs> so spell check is my friend, and I don't know. Um, but I think those kind of traditions, it's letting, helping our young people experience those, encouraging them. I think it's beautiful that your daughter took the day off yeah, to be able just, to go to Ash Wednesday. Th that just I mean, happened like a, a few weeks ago, and it just, it just I, touched, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there, there's some button somewhere that human beings have where the tears, it bypasses the brain. They just come. They just come, right. They spontaneously, uh, they're ready, they're ready to, to flow, and that, that when she said, I, I, I need Ash Wednesday off. Well, and I think it's also part of that is the idea of like, on a su like on Sunday, do we um, look at our schedule and then pick what mass fits into our schedule, or do we pick what mass we're going to and then yeah. put our schedule around it? And it's just yeah. for Ash Wednesday, she looked at her what time mass was and picked her schedule around that, and that's what's that's the beautiful that's the beauty part, yeah. like that that we've put the 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 church and our faith in the center. And, Absolutely. And something that like not all young people are ready to do, not even all adults are ready to no, do or no. do. Um, and so for her to do that at 19, 20, how old yeah, is she? She's 20. She's 20. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was beautiful. And um, you know, the other, the other thing that's really interesting is, is daylight saving time almost always invariably happens during Lent. I think, I think it has to happen during it's Lent. It's usually yeah. Palm Sunday or and, sometimes Easter yeah. Sunday, and, too. And, and I figured that so they, the Catholic Church, you know, as, as we know, we have so many masses yes. on Sunday morning, sometimes in, even Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, and of course the Saturday Vigil Mass. And it's made for daylight saving time because that's when you spring forward, you lose an hour of sleep, Half the people on Saturday night have forgotten to set their clocks ahead. So they're thinking they're going to the 930 mass and they got there just in time for 11, you know? <laughs> so it worked out perfectly other, for other them. Other denominations, you might just have missed. You, you might have missed your services, yeah. You know? But the Catholic Church, you know, you're, there's, and, and in the fall, maybe you, you thought you're going to the 930 and you got there just in time for the 8 a.m. <laughs> so it's great, you know, either way. It's the only way you're gonna get me to an 8 a.m. mass. Um, <laughs> So as we, we wrap up, um, I just want to thank you for being with us this week, to, this month to talk about Lent. Um, and as we continue through our Lenten journey, um, we'll keep you in our prayers and all of your kids, of course. Um, thank you so much for being here to thank talk you. about this. Um, I just don't think that we take our, talk about our victories sometimes when it comes to our faith. Amen. Um, so it's important to do that. And I want to thank you all for watching today. Um, Hope you enjoyed this. We will be back next month with another parent support topic. Thanks so much.